I'm JC Direct this week. It's a bull market. Well, until it's not. Uh, Coronation special dividend, a little bit mean. Sasso Horror, no surprise. Rand below 18, gold above 2,500. Local CPI, extra special. And CMH still moving higher. This is JC Direct, episode 600 for 22 August 2024. My name is Simon Brown, and I want to pause on that 600. So I started... Well, let's go all the way back to, was it July of 2008? Uh, JC Direct as a radio show was Tuesday evenings, 7 o'clock for an hour on Classic FM. We followed Classic Business, uh, which was John Fraser, and then I did an hour thereafter. I always wanted to be on radio. Absolutely, I had. Uh, so it was hugely exciting, stressful, but exciting. And then, uh, what was it, end of 2010, uh, that got cancelled, and I thought, you know what, let me take it on as a podcast. So it was April 2010 when I, sorry, 2011, my bad, April 2011 when I then started JC Direct as a podcast. We've now done 600 episodes. I took a six-odd-month sabbatical at some point. Uh, we've obviously taken some holidays. I won't be around in two weeks' time. There won't be a show the first week of September. I will be at a beach. But just a huge thanks to to everybody. I mean, who, now I'm here because I love the medium. I love doing it. I have fun. But if there wasn't anyone watching or listening to this, well, it would be a little bit weird. So massive thanks to everyone uh, here at 600. And I suppose, I mean, the big milestone, I suppose, is 1,000. And as I say that, that's eight years away. Yoro, I'm going to be old when that starts to happen. But let's get to it. Uh, and let's start with inflation data. Came out Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. Previous number was 5.1. Expected was 4.8. And it came in at 4.6. That is a proper good number, like really proper good number. Everything going in the right direction. I mean, there was a bit, uh, so transport went up a little more than, ex a, a, a little bit, but less than expected rather. Things are, are moderating. So ESCOM up a bunch, but less than expected. Inflation is moderating. The target is four and a half. It's not, it's three to six, but the governor wants four and a half. We know that. The MPC meeting is on the 19th. The FOMC is on the 18th. The question is not, will they cut? That is now baked in. The question I think we now should be asking is, do they cut half a percent instead of just a quarter? I mean, if we think about it, they want four and a half. They were initially expecting, by their, the MPC, they were expecting four and a half next year. Then they were expecting it uh, late this year. We're going to be there by that meeting. August inflation is probably going to be four and a half. So maybe... A half a percent? I mean, that's a chunky, chunky number. We'll find out in September, of course, but I mean, for now, we will absolutely uh, uh, take it. And of course, the other big one is the RAND. Now, the RAND's been doing all sorts of weird things uh, subsequent to to um, the, the the election. And it, it wasn't, you know, at, at points it was looking really strong and then it would weaken and folks would get worried and is it all over? Let's make that a weekly chart. I know I've had some issues uploading my screens onto YouTube. I think I know what the problem is, and I think I have solved it the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, there was no chance. Last week, I managed to eventually fix it, but I think I've now got it done. Uh, so that rand is, is looking pretty. I mean, we're down at 1788. We've been down to 17. Where did it go to uh, on Tuesday? I think it got to a low of uh, 1767. I hadn't realized it had gone that far down. But the trend is definitely for a stronger currency. Now, 1750, 1760 seems an easy one on the cards. Uh, ultimately, down around the, that, that sort of level there, that certainly seems easy. Once we start getting down to the sort of 17, 16, 90, a little bit more. But we have broken lines left, right, and center. It almost doesn't matter where you draw them. We are in significant turf. The RAND is looking to move stronger. There are two reasons for this. One is, obviously, money is coming into our market, and uh, we will like that. Mostly bonds. We're not seeing much equity buying at this point yet. But the other is that we are just seeing a weaker U.S. dollar. So a lot of folks will say, well, it's not us, it's the dollar. Okay, it's not us, it's the dollar. 
you know what, I, I, what ifs. But certainly that dollar is interesting. Uh, the dollar index, DXY, uh, 101.48. We've got a sort of 101 to 100 is a, a, a fairly important zone for that. We do have slightly lower highs, which suggests maybe this continues a bit. It's also... If we're seeing rates down in the U.S., surely we then also at the same time should expect to have sort of less money flowing in, right? The, 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 the FOMC cut rates, we've already seen the tenure coming under pressure in the U.S. So suddenly those folks who were buying U.S. Uh, uh, T-bills, Treasury bills, at 5% yield are now getting 38 and they're like, oh, hang on a second. There's other stuff out there. Is this the best use of our money? And the question is maybe not. So what I expect to see is probably the, the, the dollar to, to kind of keep on heading a little bit weaker. Uh, and that, sorry, yeah, a little bit weaker do dollar index and then strength for our rand. So uh, we will take it with both hands. Absolutely, we will. We're never going to complain about a stronger rand. Although I was chatting with, with uh, and I, my memory's I can't remember who it was. He said, you know what? Weak dollar, strong dollar. Uh, uh, Attila uh, Kediko from Leventine & Co. And he was saying, what we actually want is a stable dollar more than any so stables are. And he's right about that in as much as it might feel a little bit weird. Uh, so events, we got loads of them. So we've got one uh, today, 22nd August, and it's Mishima Gama with charting. It is a power hour. Uh, it is available via webcast. And, of course, if you're in around Rosebank in uh, Johannesburg, the Standard Bank head office, it's going to be huge. I've had a squiz, and it was great. There are some others we're going to be adding. Next power hour, I need to have a look over there, uh, 19 September. Oh, it is all the days of all the rate cuts and everything. So 19 September is our September power hour we are going to be looking at psychology of markets for traders and investors and then there's going to be a extra audio into your feed and on the video channel this friday 23rd with garistobi it's sponsored they've launched an actively managed etf uh, what is it called a balanced foundation etf in essence we're going to be talking about that and there'll be a bunch of events around that we've got 16 september in cape town we've got three october in joburg and webcast and we've got eight October in Durban, just one lap.com slash events for more information and booking. So bull markets, I, there was a, a, a bit of a, of a, of a kerfuffle and a, a debate uh, on, on one of the WhatsApp groups I'm in. Is it a bull market? And the answer is yes, it, it absolutely is. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. It's a bull market. How do you know it's a bull market? Well, if nothing else, our top 40 is trading at all-time highs. Uh, and that is, by every measure, bullish. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. The point being, I suppose, and, is that there's a lot of reasons to be scared of bull markets, right? The whole, well, you know, is it really, can it hold, what's going to happen, and all of those sort of things. But we've had it, uh, last week we managed the all-time high. This week we've been chugging along higher. Uh, if, uh, if we want to zoom that that way, we've had a, a, a massive rally off the 35,000 lows of the pandemic. I mean, we're now, uh, what, 40,000 points off of that. Now, I get it. It was a pandemic, et cetera. But... U.S. markets, NASDAQ and S&P, Dow Jones, just off the highs at the same time. And a lot of folks are skeptical and coming up with reasons. U.S. debt, uh, U.S. elections, etc. The GNU falling apart. All of those things are true and are risks. Make no mistake about it. But let's be clear. The price action is very simple. The price action is saying... This is a bull market. And, and, you know, we mustn't go and say, well, this is not a good bull market. Bull markets are lovely things. Why? Because we're making money, with two exceptions. If you're on the sidelines because you're too scared or because if you're shorting it. And the thing is, you don't short bull markets. You short bear markets. I don't short as a rule. Uh, in fact, I hardly ever short, really. Uh, I don't like the volatility. So you take a short position. It collapses. It bounces, hits your stop loss, collapses. Too much volatility on the downside. The upside's a bit more of a grind, so you can get into a position and absolutely hold it. And that's why I'm a big fan of bull markets, where we make money. There are always reasons why a bull market is scary and why we should stay away from it. But 
they are always just reasons. And I, I mean, over my many decades of investing, I have discovered that the best place to be in a bull market is invested. When things change, I said up front, it's a bull market until it isn't. And I know that sounds, it sounds throwaway, it sounds stupid, and in some ways maybe it is. But that's what it is. We're in a bull market. You should be almost you know, 100% invested. I, I am invested into this market. When things start to go against me and when things start to turn horrible, I will reevaluate. I've got all my little uh, SA Inc. stocks, my Mr. Price's, Fashini, the Fashini Group, and et cetera, et cetera. They're all doing great. I mean, even ShopRite, well above 300. So don't get shaken out because there's f- reasons to be scared. Uh, Rickus Reders from PSG uh, uh, Hall in One, Reimsich, uh, I interviewed him a while ago on my Money Web Now. And what did he say? He says, when you're in a new all time high type of situation, we were talking individual stocks, but it applies here as well. He says, you know, look around for reasons not to, but don't look too hard. In essence, this is going higher. At some point, it stops going higher. And of course, at some point, the bell will be rung. But of course, there is no actual bell. So we're never aware that the bull market is over until a little bit later. I am principally invested in equities. And that's where I stay. I have got positions which I call second-tier trades. They're ungeared. My Mr. Price, I have held since January of this year. I'm about 30 plus percent uh, and then dividends and up in fact maybe 40 percent plus dividends uh, into profit uh, the trades are all going great uh, i've got a gold exposure at the same time i've got my core portfolio and i'm letting it run this is what you want this is where the monies are being made as things run higher don't look for reasons to panic and exit and sit on the sidelines and go short Price action will tell you when it's time to to close some of those positions. And sitting on the sidelines because there's reasons to be scared is never a good idea. It's just going to hurt you. Uh, Speaking of uh, uh, things not to be scared of, we've also got uh, gold. Uh, trading above 2,500. So I, when I'm looking at gold, I'm always looking at the, the futures price. But if I go to my koi fin, there it is there, and I bring up, uh, uh, what is it, XAUUSD. That, for some reason, is the hardest code in the world for me to remember. I don't know why. I just struggle to remember it. I also don't know why all my fancy squiggles have disappeared uh, oh, because I'm there, I'm in an unsaved template. Now my squiggles are all back. Thank you for playing. Uh, gold in the spot market, not the futures market, $2,511.39. That little break out of that there tri- uh, uh, rectangle is significant. What's the next target? I don't know. Uh, people way smarter than me are saying sort of 2690 Others are saying 2800 Some are saying 3000 Again, Gold is in a bull market until it isn't, and that bull market's going to last. I chatted with Philip Short from uh, Flagstaff Asset Management last week, and I've spoken a lot with, uh, with, around gold with guests on my MoneyWeb Now show. The key point we were talking here, there's been a structural change. We've seen central banks buying gold, but he went digger, deeper than that, and he said they're buying gold, and particularly the sort of more brick uh, 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 central bankers, uh, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, China, India, Russia, they're cutting back on U.S. treasuries and U.S. dollars as a holding. Why? Because of fears that the U.S. could weaponize their currency and their debt. So th- this was happening from 2018, but accelerated in 2020, sorry, 2022, when we saw the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And what happened with the Russian invasion of Ukraine is that part of the sanctions against Russia was to freeze their their, their U.S. dollar holdings and offshore bank accounts. But then what about the debt? So Russia holds T-bills from America, and at some point they fall due. And does the American government say, nope, we have sanctioned you? And that got a lot of countries and central bankers thinking, Hmm. So there's still a lot to gold. Now, I know that there's a bunch of folks who are saying, no, 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 no. Uh, gold is, is, is uh, uh, you know, run too hard. I mean, there will be pullbacks. I know there are folks who are way braver than me and are shorting gold miners. Yo, that is brave work. At this point in time, it's a bull market. And you know what you do in bull markets? Uh, uh, you enjoy them, and it's the same for gold. So we will enjoy the gold bull market. I want to touch on coronation. So they had their SARS case 
uh, that was eventually decided in their favor. Uh, and at the time, I'm like, well, this is good for coronation. That's some nice, chunky, special dividend coming. So they did an update earlier in the week, and there is indeed a special dividend coming. What they said was that the, 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 they put aside around two rand, well, they put aside a whole bunch of money, and that was equal to about two rand and five cents of HEPs that they were uh, going to benefit from in this reporting period. And therefore, they would declare a special dividend of around 52. So let's get the mechanics out of the way. If you hold the share at close on the 2nd of, all, of September, you will receive that one round 52. But where's the other 53 cents? Why are they only giving a buck 52 when they're getting back 205? I, it seems a bit mean to me. Look, the chart looks good. Make no mistake about it. This was one that I was actually in, I think, at that point there. Uh, yes, it was uh, early last year, and then immediately later, like a week or two after I got in, the, they announced the, the problem with SARS that they'd lost. They then went to the Constitutional Court and ultimately won, uh, and then obviously it's run hard since then. I am not back in the stock. I'm not holding it, but it is looking good. Uh, that, that special dividend's a little bit, a little bit light. So... I mentioned uh, uh, CMH last week because I hold it. And, you know, if I zoom out here a bit, I, I got this about 26 bucks way back over here somewhere. Yeah, uh, 2021, that's about right. Yep, so I've held it for, call it three years. And pretty much I've made nothing. I think 26.40 was it. I've made nothing in terms of share price appreciation, but I've been making about 14% a year in dividends. So I'm probably 40, 45% up in profits in terms of dividends. But this stock is running, and I mentioned it last week, and you can see last week's candle, which actually came through in not bad volume either. That candle was really good. There was also a director doing a whole bunch of selling at that point in time. And I thought, you know what, we've seen this before. There's that spike back there from uh, May of 2022, but it seems to be holding. Now, it's traded up at 34.99 today, Wednesday. I'm, trade, I'm recording this at uh, half past three Wednesday afternoon. It, it had traded a whole lot higher. It's pulled back. But this is just telling you about the breadth of the bull market. So one of the key things with bull markets, to go back to that important point, is that sometimes they are very narrow bull markets. It's all about the Magnificent Seven. And if you take them out of the equation and you look at the unmagnificent 493, it's not so great. But it's the breadth that matters. And when you've got a tiny little stock like CMH, with really poor liquidity. I mean, it's done value traded today, 9.26 million czar, which is not a lot, although we're down on what's last week's volume. We're getting breadth into our market, and that is what is making such a huge difference. We're seeing it all over the place. Look at Blue Label, uh, thanks to a, to a trading update. We've got uh, Adcock Ingram coming through. We've even got ABSA after their fairly uh, uh, anemic uh, results earlier in the week. We've got Cura. They had good numbers out. Um, I'm just uh, going to be interviewing the, the CEO for next week, and I mean, some of, sorry, tomorrow. Some of my notes that I'm that I'm looking at, you know, they've got. For example, the, the numbers of grade 8s is about 2,000 higher than the numbers of grade 12s. Why does that matter? Well, let's assume all the grade 8s stay through to grade 12. They won't all, but let's assume that they do, which means when those grade 8s get to grade 12, they've got 2,000 extra students earning fees for them in grade 12. They've kind of reached that maturity point. Now, Advertech is my preferred in this space. It's the one that I hold. But any one of them, even Stadia, they're all doing quite nicely. And we're seeing this broad rally. And that is what is so important, the breadth of the rally. And that's why this is a Dinkum, uh, a, a bull market for now. Sasso results were out uh, on Tuesday. They were an absolute horror show. No dividend, no surprise. Stock down about 6%, 5% higher today. Uh, look back to last week's webcast, so a podcast where I spoke around Sasso and the uh, horrorness of it. And then just quickly, we've got uh, Spur results as well. I'm going to be chatting with Chantal Marks tomorrow morning about them. Another really good set of numbers. We're seeing the economy looking better. You know, what are we at now? 120, 30 days of no load shedding. Um, that fundamentally helps. Make no mistake about it. Uh, inflation down at 4.6. Uh, Rand uh, sub 18. Uh, gold miners making lots of money. The PGM miners not so much. Things are looking better. And, and I did the, the podcast a few weeks ago where I said, could we do 3% GDP next year? We absolutely could. Again, 
There's a lot that can derail this. Not all of it of our own making. Something horror happening in, in the U.S. could absolutely derail it. But for now, this is a bull market. And what we do in bull markets is we belong. That's exactly where you want to be, always. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, we will, as always, be back next week. Remember, the events will come in just one lap.com slash events. Uh, there's, no sh there's a show next week. There's no show on the 4th of, 5th, 4th of September. I am away. I am on holiday. No show whatsoever. But until next week, my name is Simon. As always, look after yourself. And if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.